If you're looking for a great recipe to share with your sweetheart on Valentine's Day, why not try this delicious roast Cornish game hen with mustard tarragon sauce. We have created four new great recipes that serve two, and they're in our January, February issue of Martha Stewart Living, and this is one of them. Really good. You have celery root. This is half of a celery root. They're quite large, kind of dense, and I would say they have a texture sort of somewhere between potato and carrot. They're like actually a little harder than potato, and you often find them used in slaws. They use them a lot in French cooking. Today I'm going to roast them along with some carrots. They need to be cut into half inch matchsticks. You want to be careful here because they are very, very dense and they're also round, so use caution when you're cutting them. You don't want the celery root to roll and slide and cut your finger, so be careful. In any case, if you can't find celery root and you want to still do this recipe, parsnips are great. Potato would also work here. I have my oven preheating to 425 degrees and I'm going to get these vegetables into the oven to start roasting before I start with my Cornish hen because they take a little bit longer to cook and I'm trying to time this so everything comes out sort of at the same time. Three medium carrots. They've been peeled and you can quarter them lengthwise. You want them to be similar in size to the celery root because as I mentioned, they're a very similar texture and they'll roast at the same rate. Okay, I have a rimmed baking sheet here. The vegetables can go right onto the rimmed baking sheet. And season with salt and pepper and toss with oil. A tablespoon of oil, give or take, and some salt and pepper. There should be two racks in your oven. This is going to go on the bottom, and then the hen, when it goes in, will go on top. Here's the hen. It's a Cornish hen. I almost never use these. They're a perfect size to serve two people. Um, if you can't find them, you can certainly use a half a chicken or something, but these are really nice, and you can usually find them. I'm cutting out the backbone. Using kitchen shears is a perfect way to do this. You can also use a knife but I'm also gonna cut this in half. I'm not just spatchcocking this, which is something that we do quite frequently. So flip it back over, and we do this so that when we cut through the skin, we get a nice, clean slice. I like to just sort of get a slice through the skin before I cut into the meat, and that way I assure that each half has an equal amount of skin, because crispy, crunchy skin is delicious. And then just cut down through the breastbone. You can use scissors for that as well. I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm going to sear the chicken on top of the stove before I put it into the oven. That assures that the skin gets nice and golden brown as the hens cook because they're quite small and they would probably not brown in the time it takes for them to cook through. So you're going to want to brown your hens. I like to use a cast iron skillet because it's already dark and if it splatters and gets discolored you don't notice but also it's nice and heavy and perfect for searing pretty much anything. So add your halved hens skin side down into a hot pan. I've seasoned the skin side, but I have not seasoned the meat side yet, which I'm gonna do now. Then let those sit there for about three minutes. You want the skin side to be nice and golden brown. It's nice and golden brown. Turn it over and then into the 425 degree oven. The veg are gonna take 20 to 25 minutes and the, the Cornish hens are gonna take 18 to 20 minutes. So this is good timing because those veg have already been in there for about five minutes. About halfway through, I stirred these just so they would roast evenly. I'm gonna set those aside for one sec. The hens. They're so cute, right? I'm going to transfer these to a platter because I'm going to make a pan sauce in this pan. I always like to keep the handle covered, at least temporarily, because I can't even tell you how many times I've touched the handle of something that was super hot. 
like right out of the oven and burn my hand really bad. So transfer the veg to a platter. And then grab the hens and put them on the platter too. This is a nice, elegant presentation. Two tablespoons of chopped tarragon is gonna finish the sauce, so I'm gonna get that ready now. And some capers. It's a tablespoon of brine packed capers. You can certainly use salt pack. If you do, you wanna soak them to get rid of some of that additional saltiness. And the capers also need to be chopped, so just a little bit. And this is also gonna have some lemon juice, about two tablespoons, so I'll get that lemon ready. And now I can turn my stove back on. Medium heat so that you don't burn those brown bits and deglaze the pan with some water. You could also use some wine if you have it, but water is perfectly delicious here because there's so much flavor in all the other sauce ingredients. Scrape up your brown bits. And then add your mustard. It's a teaspoon of mustard. Two tablespoons of the lemon juice. One, two, it's really simple. And just don't forget that there's the fat from the chicken in there, which is gonna be adding tons of flavor, plus those delicious brown bits. Capers. Very minimal. All right, I don't want this to over reduce. It only needs to reduce very, very slightly. So I'm turning it off. My pan is nice and hot. And to that, I'm adding my tarragon, two tablespoons of tarragon. And then you spoon that sauce over your chicken and vegetables. The platter stayed nice and warm because it was sitting on top of the stove. Then you spoon your sauce over the top and you have an amazing dinner. And this is like, like restaurant quality stuff we're talking about, I feel like. We were very inspired for our Valentine's um, menus that we created by French bistro. So they're all sort of slight takes on French bistro classics. We have a, a steak au poivre. We have a delicious vegetarian gratin, a pasta gratin. We have this. And we have mussels, moule frites. So good. The oven fries are really incredible. So try this recipe and then get the magazine and try all the rest of our delicious Meals for Two for Valentine's from the Jan Feb issue of Martha Stewart Living. You're really gonna love them. If you like recipes like this and you want more, make sure to click like and subscribe because we have plenty more where this came from.